All right, well today we have my come and swap Ford in the shop for the first time in a very long time. So this thing got replaced, it got parked over a year ago now, and we really haven't touched it since then. And it's time to finally give it the love and attention it deserves because it's gonna have to step up and save the day. This thing is coming out of retirement. So the truck that I bought to replace it, my 2020 Super Duty, decided to break down on us in Louisiana, about nine hours from home on a trip and it's currently stranded there at the dealer uh, awaiting repairs. So this one <laughs> has to step up because we got towing to do. So if you're unfamiliar with this truck, it is a 2008 Ford F-350. These came with really atrocious engines that fail all the time. They're constantly blown up, so it's very easy to find these trucks blown up, which is what I did. And then I put a 5.9 Common Rail Cummins in it out of an 05 Dodge. We did the cooling system. We did a bunch of stuff. There's a whole build series on it if you haven't seen it and you're interested. But we, we got it done. We put about 25,000 miles on it, mostly towing, and it has been a great truck. It never left us stranded. It's got a better record than the new truck does already. So that being said, though, over that time, it's developed some, some issues, and that's part of the reason it got parked and it got replaced. So if we want to put it back in service, we got to fix those issues, starting with the transmission. So the transmission in this thing is is the stock Ford 5R110 and it's controlled by the stock Ford ECU. We've developed a problem where randomly and intermittently it will start to flare the shifts. It'll shift, especially you know if you're when you're taking off, it'll every time it shifts. If you stop just in the middle of the road, you don't have to pull off, let it cool down, nothing. Put it in park, turn the ignition off, turn it back on again, the problem goes away. So it leads me to believe it's an issue with the tune. You know, we have a transmission tune on it to work well with the Cummins engine and the stock ECU can learn weird parameters. So we're hopeful that it's that, but before we even dive into that, we're gonna do what we should have done a long time ago and do a uh, fluid service on the transmission. I bought all the stuff to do this before we ever even thought about getting rid of this truck, but at that point in time, we were in the middle of building this car and this was a very involved, very time consuming build. So because of that, this thing kind of got pushed to the wayside and now it's time. It's, it's time for it to shine. It's time for it to get the attention it deserves. So that's where we're gonna start today. I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering. We're gonna get to work. This pan wasn't clean, but that fluid is pretty dark. There was no metal or, or anything on the drain plug. I think maybe it's just some pretty burnt old fluid. This might be easier than we thought. Could be a long overdue. Yeah, well, we didn't have enough fluid to change it when we did the converter. So we only got a few fresh quarts then. See our new filter here this is a big transmission filter. You can see the fluid better here in the pan. It's dark. Now this fluid is naturally a little darker than like your standard really red ATF, but that's pretty dark. The stuff might not have ever been changed in this truck's life. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, you can see in here, the valve body, the filter. Filter looks pretty crusty. Again, I've had this stuff for a while. I should have done this a long time ago. Give me crap all you want for a lack of maintenance. This is uh, this is definitely on me. I knew we needed to do this and I put it off. So we'll see. Maybe it'll be like brand new. Maybe it'll destroy it. We'll find out. Stay tuned. I did not have this in the right place for that. Ruined it. <laughs> All right, fluid and filter are changed. We're waiting for the rain to calm down before we can back this thing out of the shop and let it run for a minute and check fluid levels. As you can see, we've had some uh, some visitors to our engine bay. So we're gonna get in here with the vacuum and try to clean this up some. 
as step one. Obviously, we need to redo the valve cover. I wonder if this is from rats or squirrels, or whatever. Damn. It looks like chew marks. It does. These it dang really squirrels, does, man. Dude, that's... They chewed all up on my wow. other truck, the green truck. Apparently, I can't park anything over there for long periods of time. But that's why I don't like having vehicles I don't use. They waste away like this thing has been. At least it's getting another shot at gory. try to go get this thing put back on the road and then we can go take it for a real drive and see if our issue is still there before we move on to the next set of things we need to get done all right well this thing is officially road legal again regardless of what we decide to do with this truck buying another truck the, the new truck uh, this needed to happen so we could work any bugs out of this thing because we are gonna sell it we want to make sure it's 100% dialed so Went to the tag office, got a register, and we can actually drive it around for the first time in over a year. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I do need to figure out what that noise is. It's had it for a long time. That little squeaky squeak. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to drive this thing. It's been a year. I've driven it, you know, up and down my street, moved it from that side of the yard to this side of the yard, and that's it. And uh, we're finally gonna go drive drive this thing again. We'll see if the transmission issue's still there. I've got a tune solution to fix it, potentially. So yeah, I'm just excited. I think knowing what I know now, after having driven the new truck and whatever, I'll drive this thing differently. I was always super, super cautious with it. I babied it a lot. And I think if I drove it without worrying as much about breaking it, without being as afraid of breaking it, it would feel more capable than I realized, if that makes any sense. And then also the whole breaking down situation, like we broke down with the new truck, just like we could break down in this, and realistically we realized it was worse to break down the new truck with the warranty, because now we gotta wait to see how the warranty stuff shakes out and, and get it to the dealer and wait on them to work on it, because if we work on it, then you know that might cause issues, and and all this stuff, whereas with this truck, we could have just got to work on fixing it. So I think having that experience has changed my perception in the sense that, well, in a lot of ways, but in the sense that I realized that we can break down on anything. And uh, at least if we break down in this, it's a truck that we know very well. You know, I built this thing from the ground up. I've touched just about every nut and bolt on it. So if something goes wrong, I know where to look. Yeah, I haven't driven this thing hard in a long time. This thing makes some jam for sure. One thing I definitely don't miss is the transmission shift strategies. Not ideal. So a couple of things that I'm noticing right off the bat after having driven the new truck for a year. The ride's not as good for sure. This thing's a lot rougher uh, than the new truck. Uh, the power is good, but the shifting just feels gross. That's one thing I've always disliked about this truck is the transmission, it just shifts gross. Ooh, this is a nice set of corners right here. Hmm. So far, everything, everything is good. You can put a setup on this that should make significantly more power top end and have similar spool to stock sound way cooler. It may be worth letting it ride. This thing's pretty peppy in the race tune. <laughs> Temps are perfect. 190, and taking her temp does get a little toasty when she's sitting idling. 
Battery voltage is good. This is my EGT sensor. I disconnected the buzzer. I, you can hook a buzzer to it, so if it goes over a specified temperature, it buzzes. But we were having this weird buzzing thing that we were trying to figure out. I unhooked it as part of a diagnostic procedure, and now we're hooking it back up because I want to try to tow with this thing in the race tune and see how it feels. So this will beep at us if the EGTs get above 1350, which might be set a little low. Um, but for right now, we'll leave it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook up to the trailer and see how it feels to tow the trailer. I felt it driving around solo again, again for the first time in a year, first time since I've gotten used to the new truck. Now I want to see how it tows compared to the new truck. I just want to see how it feels. But dyno. Yeah, but dyno <laughs> if we're really ready to go back to, back to this thing or we maybe do another option. So get this thing hooked up. this is all about obviously the trailer is empty so that's not empty it doesn't have a car in it it has pretty much everything else that's normally in it i mean this thing rips it does that thing that's always so annoying where it shifts like i think from second to third and then back back to second it goes like uh, uh, uh. Does it every time you go through the gears? I mean, so far it's feeling pretty, uh, pretty a one. Ready for Orlando? Again, I was always so afraid to drive this thing hard with the trailer on it and you know, like get on it at all, but like it really does just fine. I'm gonna give her a real a real shakedown. This is a big decision we have to make. Not that it was ever bad, just the new truck life is definitely nicer and more comfortable. I will say that. But this thing's not bad. How you feel back there, Chrissy? It's good. You comfy? Yeah. It's definitely like this thing doesn't ride as good, but there is air ride solutions for that. It's expensive, but that would definitely make it ride maybe probably better than the new truck. biggest things right now are the suspension which I already kind of had a plan for that and the the transmission shifting stuff which we already have a plan to improve that by using HP tuners instead of the SCT to tune it. it it might shift and drive way better once we do that so I mean if that's the two gripes that's really not too bad it feels pretty good right now dude I mean I forgot how solid this thing is it's a good truck the, the most of the reason I got rid of it was because I was so terrified of it breaking down. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> whoa, 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 exactly. whoa. That's 1300, 12. If we did a bigger turbo, 
it would make more power and lower EGTs. Intake air temps. Mm -hmm. We've always had trouble with the intake air temps getting a little hot when you're sitting idling for a long time with the AC on. That was it was on my all these things that were on my list are coming back to me. Yeah. That were on the list of That's to what do. was driving it to remember, remember what the bugs were or whatever not the you bugs. Know, just but little areas of improvement. Yes. So we're at fourteen hundred RPM, which is a little too low. Of course this person pulls out. But I've gotta go third drive. And then it oh it down shifts for me. I'd say the old girl did felt pretty good. What do you think, Osway? Let's get your verdict. I mean, you rode another truck a lot from the passenger side. From the back seat. I know it is different. <laughs> no, it feels good. I like you said, it's like a little louder, but I yeah, mean, more wind noise. Doesn't ride as nice. It's still gonna get the job done. So. I mean, it's definitely more comfortable than any other truck I've had aside from the new truck. Yeah. <laughs> trailer feels good. Truck feels good with the trailer. Definitely a rig. Question is, do we wrap the trailer black to match the truck or paint the truck white to match the trailer? You can't have a white truck. You're right. Chrissy says I can't have a white truck because two white trucks I've had have been the two trucks that have left me stranded while towing a trailer. My 7.3 left me stranded and the new truck left me stranded. They were both white trucks. Verdict's in then. Verdict's in. So we wrap the trailer. And we don't have to do either, obviously, but it would look nice, this rig, if the trailer was black with the polished and the chromies. So first thing we're gonna do, we need to bleed the brakes. I never bled the brakes after the build and I had this off and set to the side. It did keep all the fluid in it, but there's a possibility we got some air in the system that's been there forever, I don't know. The brakes have always felt kind of spongy. So that's something I wanna do and just see where we're at. Um, this is the pipe I'm referring to for the intake air temp. So if I feel the intercooler, it is cool to the touch. It's working great. But then this pipe is super hot to the touch because it goes up right by the radiator and the radiator fan. So if we can, insulate this pipe so the heat doesn't come into the pipe and then into the air, I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah, so let's see. Down here, we got 84 degrees. Can you see that? 84 degrees at the bottom of the intercooler. The truck's been sitting for a minute, but the pipe's 103. It's 120 something up here, 113. Between 110 and 120 up here. So that's definitely our problem. There's room to be, stuff to be addressed. There. Yeah, so that, that should help. All right, go ahead, Larry. Is it coming out? Yeah. How's it look? Um, well, should probably go at least so it's clean at a minimum, you know? Can't hurt to put some clean fluid in this thing. All right, it's time to try to pull this tape off. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have some cleaning to do. I mean, this has been on here since the hurricanes, which happened a while ago. That was a very unfortunate situation, <laughs> for sure. I hadn't checked on this thing in a while, I'd just been sitting there, went to open it, couldn't get in, finally got in, and the sunroof drains had clogged and leaked all inside the truck. Like, I had to clean it, it was, uh, it was not fun. It just made me feel bad, you know? I had been putting off selling it, and instead I was letting it waste away, but that's over. They're gonna use it or get rid of it. I mean, we're gonna use it first, but we're gonna continue using it or get rid of it. So the reason why the door handle was taped on in the first place is because I went to get into the truck to move it before the hurricane had been sitting for a while and the batteries had died. So the key fob didn't work to unlock it. And I found out the hard way that the key lock, the lock cylinder where you use the physical key didn't work either. So I had no way of getting into the truck to move it and get it out from under a tree. So I had to resort to breaking the door handle off. Now, the only reason I took that route is because it had already been messed with before, before I got the truck, you could tell someone had tried to break into it. 
Uh, but it wasn't an ideal scenario, but I had to do what I had to do to get into the truck. It was that or leave it under a tree during a hurricane. So now we're kind of dealing with the uh, repercussions of that and fixing a problem I created a while ago. All right, so door handle is on. It does work. We at least have a functioning door handle that's not taped on now. So, hey, that's a win in my book. Uh, so once we get done with that, we're going to start on this, try to shield up this intercooler pipe. See if we can't get our intake air temps down. Keep the air that's cooled by the intercooler cool as it goes into the engine. Bring our intake air temps down. So this being a swap truck, it is a bit of a hodgepodge of parts. So I used a Mishimoto intercooler kit in their intercooler piping and then modified it to work with the Cummins engine since the turbo outlet and the inlet to the engine are in different places. Now, I haven't taken this stuff off in a long time. I mean, really since I built the truck and did all the, that, that fab work. So a lot of these were really stuck in the silicone couplers. If you've ever taken a rubber hose off or a silicone coupler or anything that's been on for a while, you know the struggle of it. It basically almost glues itself. So we managed to get them out. It was a bit of a struggle. This one pipe is really long and it wraps through a tight area but teamwork makes the dream work we got it out and started heat wrapping it so we're gonna do two layers on this we're gonna do a reflective gold barrier which should help and then also a thicker silica barrier to try to keep all of that cool air in now normally i wouldn't do this i would want the intercooler pipes to use their thermal efficiency to, to wick heat out. But in this case, we're, we're wicking heat in. We're heat soaking our air after it's already been cooled down. So if we can keep the air as cool as it comes out of the intercooler, as it goes into the engine, we're gonna drop our intake air temps a lot, which should help really in every avenue. Something that needs to get done. All right, we got our, oh my, I almost did us playing that. This pipe is so long because it comes out of the bottom of the intercooler. Uh, but anyway, this is like a Mishimoto intercooler pipe kit. I just, I, I had to basically build this whole pipe from scratch, but except for this part, I think. Um, but this one, I just had to modify the second piece. Uh, but anyway, we're double wrapped. So we've got the reflective gold foil and we've got this thicker aluminum silica heat barrier. I think between that, it should at least make a big difference. It's definitely better than nothing. I think what was happening is this pipe being so long, running up next to the radiator is the heat from the fan blowing all the hot air from the radiator around was just heat soaking the pipe. So hopefully this will help keep the cool air coming out of the intercooler cool as it goes into the engine. Uh, so yeah, we gotta get it back in. A little tricky, a little tight. Hit the fan truck, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Got lucky, it was easier that time. Oh, I know, I know. I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch. But. What is there? Something was making a nest in here, or it somehow got this clogged with leaves from driving around. <laughs> oh, that's pretty wild. I think that noise is the compressor. Let's listen. That squeak, squeak, squeak. It's the compressor. The AC compressor. I turned it off and it was fine. been sitting on the pipe before 120 and it had been sitting for half an hour it's like cool to the touch right and up here even 
Yeah. Now it's cool. It's cooler than it was after it had been sitting. All right, well, I mean, that's, is that everything? I think that's everything we had on our agenda. That's the checklist. Fuel filters, which will be, you know, Fuel filters tomorrow. that we get tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be towing the vet to FD Orlando with this thing for display at the NATO booth. The transmission, knock on wood, has not done the act up thing again. We are going to be doing some transmission tuning next week. We should be able to get it dialed in a lot better than it is now. And that's one of my biggest gripes with this truck. So let me give you a run through of the different potentials. So we have like three options, really. Option one would obviously be to keep the 2020 truck that we bought and continue on the path of selling this truck. I felt so bad about having how I put off selling this truck but i'm so glad i didn't now it really all kind of panned out that we still had this truck lying around due to my procrastination that being said we could keep the new truck obviously it's got a gonna have a brand new fuel system now it did get covered under warranty but it's like i think to prevent that issue from happening we would have to do the disaster prevention kit or the pump swap and anything we do is going to void any potential of a future warranty so it's basically are we willing to get the truck back and know that we're just never going to be able to get it warrantied again even if we leave it as it is, it's obviously it's, it's apparently very hard to get this stuff warrantied. And a lot of people don't get things that really should be warrantied, warrantied, which is the lesson we have learned. Because of all that, as much as I love that truck and it performs super well, it drives nice, it's quiet, it's a good truck. I think we're set on selling the truck. We get rid of the truck, we move on with our lives. Lesson learned. We tried the new truck thing, not for us. We're car people. We want to be able to work on our stuff when it breaks. So I think that's off the table, let's say. I think we're pretty much committed to that, I would say. So it leaves us two options. Option number one is keep this truck and upgrade it, fix it up, make it nicer, make it better, you know, do upgrades for performance, do maintenance stuff, like really go through this thing tip to tail, get it to a hundred percent. Or option two would be to buy a Cummins truck like this one that we used to tow our trailer home with a six speed in it, up a dually, a long bed dually, so we can tow the goose tank. I do like the idea of that. I really enjoy driving this truck because if we keep this truck, some of the things I want to do is a bigger turbo. I want to do an engine brake because the engine brake is very nice to have. I really like to do a stick shift, but the more we've looked at it, the more that seems kind of silly. I'm not big on something's pretty good as it is to just change it and not necessarily make it better, just different. Like I'd rather just get rid of it and do that with something else. So we'd have to get rid of this center console, go back to the older style center console. We'd have to find the transmission, the pedal, the, the hydraulics. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that. We need a new transmission uh, cover pan because I guess it's different between the manual and the auto ones, or we gotta cut a hole in the floor. There's a lot that's needed. This truck is full drive. There is a transfer case. So I, I don't think it's worth doing the six speed swap, which was kind of my original idea. Um, so I think really our option is leave this truck stock with, with with this auto transmission, hopefully the tuning makes it better because that's really the biggest gripe with the truck is the way the transmission shifts or get a Cummins truck with a stick shift. Really like the idea of the stick shift Cummins truck. Uh, I really enjoy driving this thing. With the engine brake. With the engine brake, stick shift with the engine brake. We can put an engine brake on this with the auto, but we're gonna have to figure out our own wiring to get the transmission to cooperate with the engine brake and lock the converter while the engine brake's on and unlock it when it's not on. And, you know, that's kind of an unknown. So that's something we'd have to figure out. So that's really what it boils down to. You know, keep this truck, keep it auto, try to make an engine brake work, maybe not be able to make an engine brake work. Basically, the money we're going to put into this to get it where we would want it for the same money with on top of selling this, we could easily buy Cummins truck with a stick. So the Cummins truck, it's kind of a happy in between. It's not as old as this truck. It's not as old of an engine as this truck. So it's not quite as simple as this truck, especially, you know, working on engine surrounding areas but it's more comfortable it's, it's a good bit more comfortable quieter inside rides nicer all of those things it's not quite at the level of the 2020 truck it's not quite as comfortable but it's a lot easier to work on and and the reason why a dodge i the only reason i didn't buy a dodge when i bought the the ford the super duty was because they have a bunch of transmission issues but now that i'm willing and wanting to drive a six shift truck that Kind of eliminates that issue their issues are with their automatic transmissions mainly so and the, the reason for going with a cummins truck is the cummins the engine for a truck that we're going to work on when it breaks cummins is really the only way we're willing to go because when you get into the power strokes or the gm trucks the duramax trucks v8 turbo diesel is a lot more complex than a cummins cummins is an inline six just by the nature of the design it being an inline six 
they are far, far, far easier to work on than a V8 turbo diesel. I mean, if you look under the hood of this thing, compared to under the hood of the 2020 truck, I mean, it is night and day. There is so much stuff going on, so many hoses going everywhere, plastic everywhere that fails. So it's just whether we get a little bit newer truck that kind of comes with everything we want already, or we try to kind of modify, change, and upgrade this to have at least some of those things. You know, this truck we did build ourselves, uh, so there is that, but the newer trucks are definitely a bit more powerful, more comfortable, all of those things. And I really like the stick shift. Driving this truck was a lot of fun. Feel like a baby semi towing around. So I don't know, we're torn. We'll think about it. But regardless, you know, whether we sell this thing or not, we needed to get this ready. You know, whether we're gonna drive it or we were gonna sell it, you know, I can't, I don't, I don't like selling vehicles that are, you know, have issues and we've had these lingering issues, which is part of why I hadn't sold it because I wanted to fix the stuff first. So either way, I'm glad we got a lot of those small issues taken care of and really made some big improvements on this thing in, in small ways. And then the transmission tuning should help a lot and we should be able to kind of determine whether that transmission issue is gone or not. And if it is, then it's ready to sell or it's ready for us to run it uh, or start upgrading it. We've got options, but at least this thing's still here. I mean, shout out to this truck, you know? I mean, this thing sat for a year outside in the rain went through two hurricanes didn't get ran but four or five times in that entire year and literally just idled for five minutes drove it from there to here or back and it's it's running great knock on wood knock on wood but that being said i'll let you know how the transmission tuning goes i'll let you know how the truck goes hopefully next week we'll go finalize that whether it's picking up the truck or selling the truck at the moment i'm pretty dead set on selling it so hopefully we'll go up there get that stuff done and uh move on with our lives. So that being said, uh, let me know what you think. What, what would you do? I know a lot of you are going to say the Fummins, but really think about it. Really think about it. Which one would you pick? Which one would you rather have? Which one would you rather sit in for 18 hours on a road trip towing a trailer? Which one would you rather work on? Think about all those things and let me know in the comments below. And what would you do to this? If you were going to keep this, you know where it's at now, what would you do moving forward to make it better? And uh, what would you do to the Cummins truck? You know, for those of you who have one of the Cummins trucks, what are the things I should look out for? What kind of year range? Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate it. So that being said, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye. All right, well, we are two for two. <laughs> we pulled into this uh, this Publix Nero SW. And if you look at this caliper, it's like the pads aren't touching. Can you see that? There's a gap. This caliper doesn't seem to be doing anything, um, but it's getting hot and it's smoking.